church. Amen. For my children, my wife, to be a natural father, spiritual father, I thank and praise God. Because I believe if he calls you to it, he'll give you what you need to do it. Amen. 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 Not walking in my own confidence, but walking in the confidence of Christ and, and what God says he's going to do in our lives. And thank God for there's challenges that come along with whatever the assignment is, but but you have to be determined and you gotta allow God, allow God to minister unto you so you be able to minister unto other people. I have yet to see one scripture that God says, I saved you so you could be selfish. I I I, I don't see it. And I need somebody to help me because I, I, I looked it over, but I do miss things. I, I got some timers, and um, I wear glasses, and sometimes I miss scriptures. So um, please help me at the end of the service. If you see a scripture that says, I saved you to be selfish, I need to see that. I need to see that. Amen. But today, from Proverbs fourteen twelve and from Psalm 37, 23, and 24, we want to talk about preparing to be the best you. Preparing to be the best you. You are the best you in the world. And nobody can, can, can argue you down about that. You're the best you. Amen. It's when you try to be somebody else that you run into a whole lot of problems. I tell you, if you want to imitate somebody, imitate Jesus. And then you'll be all right because you'll never get done. Uh, but it's a good, it's a good challenge. Uh, but you are the best you. Preparing to be the best you. Lord God, we love you, we praise you, we thank you. Have your way in this message. Have your way in me. Move me out of the way so you can, in fact, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I would like to caution us that, that uh, it's not good to compare fathers. It's not good to compare anybody. But on Father's Day, don't compare fathers because fathers aren't the same. Families aren't the same. Children aren't the same. And situations aren't the same. As a matter of fact, scripturally, fathers are called to imitate, to try to imitate God in taking care of their families. And really, mothers and fathers are to raise children cooperatively and not competitively. But, but somebody, somebody within the relationship got to have some common sense and, and got to know who God is. That's the way I feel about it, if it's going to work. Amen. Because even if two folk know God, it's a challenge. Amen. And everything is not going to be, you know, as sweet and as simple as we think it should be. But look at it this way. You are in charge of helping somebody else live their life. Amen. And I don't believe you can help somebody live their life if you're not living your own. I'm not talking about existing. I'm talking about living. Living your life according to what God would have you uh, uh, live and who he would have you be. you got to take this thing serious. You really do. You really have to take it serious. And, and that's why I said, show me the verse about being selfish. Because if you're selfish, you're going to be a bad parent. That's that you're a bad person. Because all you care about is you. All you're concerned about is you and what you need and how you're going to look and how you're going to feel. And it's, you can't help anybody else if you're always helping yourself. Because if you're always helping yourself, ain't nothing left over. I, I wish I had a witness in here. If, if you're always about you, what is it to give to anybody else? And how can we be satisfied with just taking care of ourselves when, when, when no man is an island, no man is alone? How, how can we be content with being self-absorbed and self-important? I, I just don't understand that, but I'm preparing to be the best me. I want you to prepare to be the best you. It's not easy being a father, as that does not say that it's going to be easy being a mother. This is not a comparative message. Amen. Amen. You know why? Because really, Papa Bear, Mama Bear, why are different? Amen. Mama Bear got her role. Papa Bear got his role. And Mama Bear, Papa Bear, both take his little bearlets. I ain't call them cubs. I call them bearlets. Amen. But it's when we can come together that the children are blessed. But God has responsibilities for the father. Israelite's history shows that the father was to be diligent in instructing his children in the ways of the Lord for their own spiritual development 
and well-being. Fathers were to be the spiritual leaders of their household, not the only spiritual person in the household. The people need to understand that sometimes they, daddy's supposed to be a spiritual leader. They think mom ain't spiritual. No, no. He was supposed to be a spiritual leader in the household, but not the only spiritual person in the household. And to be a protector and a provider for their families. That's not to say that mama can't protect and provide. That's not to say that mama can't work. In these days and times, amen. If papa bear, mama bear work. Amen. You need to. Because all the stuff that that the bearers eat has gone up. And what they wear, all those prices have gone sky high. Amen. But the mother and father together are supposed to employ Proverbs 22.6. Train up a child in the way he or she should go. And when he or she is old, they will not depart. That doesn't mean they're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean they're not, that, they're not, that they will not make mistakes. What it means is that you've given them a foundation, something that they can uh, pull back on and lean on. Because we all make mistakes. Amen. I'm still making mistakes. Uh, you don't stop making mistakes when you grow up. They, if there's any perfect people, you need to leave right now because this message don't get no better. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 4 says, fathers are instructed not to provoke your children to wrath. That means excessive discipline, unnecessary stuff, especially when it's not getting the results you need. I'm doing this because I'm your father and I love you. But you're hurting me. You're breaking me. You're destroying my spirit. See, that's what we need to understand what fatherhood and motherhood is all about. So Ephesians said, don't provoke your children wrath. Otherwise, don't keep messing with them. But bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. In other words, don't keep on scolding and nagging your children for nothing. Because you're afraid they might turn out like... Sometimes we see similarities in our children. I'll stop that right there. Mother Throb, more than how you doing? Amen. No, don't keep on scolding and nagging your children. Make them and make them angry and resentful. Some children don't even want to come to church because of what their churchly parents do to them. My God. He said, rather we ought to bring them up in the loving discipline the Lord himself approves with suggestions and godly advice. And it's not saying don't discipline your children. It's saying don't destroy your children. As a matter of fact, don't destroy any child. If you're a member of this church, don't destroy any child. These children belong to us, and they have parents, but when they come here, they are under our supervision, under our tutelage, but your motive can't be to destroy them. We can't sit around, oh, I don't like this one, and I don't like that one, and I don't like... No, they're here for a reason. God sent them here and ordained us to have them here that we might be able to help them. How can you scream at a child in the church and don't say nothing to yours? Oh, Oh, glory, hallelujah. Oh, my, my, my. Your child can do anything, but nobody else's child can. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. One of the greatest things about God is that whatever God calls you and I to do, or whomever he calls you and I to be, guess what? He's going to give us what we need to be. If you're serious enough to say yes, God will, in fact, give you exactly what you need to be exactly who he called you to be. And I believe that with all my heart. Amen. I'm not going to give my oldest child's age, but I've been a daddy over 30 years now. <laughs> Don't look at it. Leave it alone. <laughs> but I suggest to you today, in order to bless someone else, a father needs to be in the, in the process of becoming the best person that they can be. The best person that they can be. They need to be them best selves. We owe that not only to ourselves, but to our families. And you know what? Sometimes you, sometimes children show up and they're not playing. I wish I had somebody to talk. It, the time to prepare for fatherhood may not be when the child show up. It might be prior to that because if you have the potential to be a father, to be a daddy, you might need to think about that when you prepare to try to live your life. If I had the responsibility. And some people are, some men are in the roles of father. They're not the natural father, but they're in the roles of, and some people have their own natural children, and they got other children. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it's not that the other children don't have fathers. It's sometimes when they come over your house, 
is just a little bit more peaceful. I, I, that's the way it is. Sometimes they feel something a little bit different. Sometimes it's tension because sometimes mom and dad, uh, they're trying to grow up themselves. Because you got kids raising kids now. But we still have a responsibility. Because I haven't met a child yet that told me. I met some children that said they, in the mother's womb, they could hear, like, they could hear the music in church and stuff. It was scary stuff. They could feel stuff and hear stuff. But I haven't had one child tell me yet that they said, please bring me into the world. That was not their choice. So how can we bring a child into the world and then treat them like they asked to come here? Oh, there's some responsibilities that we have for our children. So God created us and knows everything about us and has a plan for our lives through salvation through Jesus Christ. I am biased. I think to be the best mother, the best father, you need to be in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm biased. I said it. That's the way I feel about it. That's what I know. I think I know what I know. I think I know who I know. But based on that, I think in order to be the best parent, the best mother, the best father, you need to be a Christian in Christ Jesus. Seriously. I didn't say in church, in Christ. There's a difference between being in church and being in Christ. I know a lot of folk in church, and they're yet to be in Christ. Amen. How do you know? I just listen and watch. Oh, but I strongly suggest to be the best father, my brothers, it's necessary that you have to prepare to be the best you. And God will provide you with everything you need to be the father he calls you to be if you're willing to surrender to him and be obedient to him. And that's where we struggle sometimes, surrender and obedience, because we men, we got it under control. And if we have it under control, why is it out of control? We have to surrender and be obedient to God, and we got to trust the process. I'm not talking about Joel and B. I'm not talking about the 76ers. I'm talking about the process for life. you got to trust God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. And in conversation with some brothers, sometimes uh, brothers we get into trying to be right. And a lot of times it's not about being right. It's what's best for the family, what's best for the children. See, when you get to the point where you always got to be right, got to be right, got to be wrong, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have done that, people get all caught up in that. And somebody got to be adult enough and mature to say, what's best for the child? And somebody's got to have enough sense to say, you know what, let's not have this discussion in front of them. Let's have a sidebar later on. I'll meet you about 10 o'clock when the 10 o'clock news come on. And, and when that we got to help ourselves in this process. We, we, it's, it's time out for us trying to get the schools to raise our kids. Schools don't raise kids. Schools educate. Amen. We want everybody else to raise our kids except us. No, it's our responsibility. But, Pastor, you don't understand i got to work five jobs. No, you don't. you just got to be a good steward of a couple of them. And see, it's, you, you, you can't just let your children go... Why you go out there making all the money and, and seeing the world? and No, we have a responsibility. They'll be 18 soon. And they're still your children. <laughs> Anybody got uh, an older child that's not theirs yet? 25, 30, 40. They're not yours. They're still your child. Amen. They still your little girl, your little boy. I don't care how old they get. You still see them. Amen. As a matter of fact, you still remember. You still remember. For some of us, it was cloth diapers. Amen. All that you had to go through, washing them things out and making sure everything was all nice and, and, and putting all the stuff on them so they wouldn't get no rash. And now they give you a rash of problems. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't going to. But, but the, the fathers, we got, we want to be our best selves. As a father, you have to make a decision as to whether or not you're going to handle this very important responsibility your way or God's way. And it can't be a mixture. It can't be 50% God and 50% you. It's got to be 100% God. And I'm not, I would not suggest to you that you can't be a good father without being a Christian. I'm suggesting to you that the best way to be a good father is to be a Christian. Because somebody will challenge that, and they can challenge it all they want. But for me, I said, I'm, look, 
When it's all said and done, like I say, I left it all out on the playing field. I did the best I could. I think God wants us to do the best we can. And see, when I do the best I can, it may not do, be the best or be the same as Reverend Dr. Terrence did. Because God said, I'm not comparing you to him. I'm comparing you. I'm holding you up against what I told you to do and what I told you to be and who your wife is or who the mother of your kid is. That's, that's what God begins to talk about with the men. He said, come on, brothers. We got children at risk here. There's something rewarding and comforting when one is able to truly say at the end of the day or at the end of the process that with God's help, I gave it my best shot. Yeah. Amen. Because none of us is perfect. We're going to make some mistakes. Yeah. And our children are going to make mistakes because we are human and we're striving towards perfection. But what do we do with those mistakes? Sometimes we have to put the embarrassment on the side so we can help our children out. It's not about you. Sometimes it's, it's, it's crazy, like, where did you get that stuff from? But no matter where it came from, it still happened. We've got to teach our children to still respect authority, even though people of, of certain colors are being shot. And we got to let them know how to deal with stuff, because we can't be with them every minute of the day, every step of the day. But we can teach them how to pray and how to be careful and how to hold their tongue and not be going up against authority, running your mouth all at teachers and, and all with police and everything. How to be able to be respectful of authority and how to be able to, to have some parents who will go and fight or go and stand in for them to see you got to have it set up that they can come home and tell you any and everything. You got to have a poker face. Because yeah. sometimes they're going to tell you some stuff. You keep asking questions. Create an atmosphere where they can come tell you everything. Yeah. And don't get mad if they only tell mommy. Because if mommy is real mommy, mommy go let Papa Bear know somehow, some way, what's going on with little Missy and, 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 and little man. <laughs> Uh, I told I told one guy, he said, well, she, well, my daughter don't talk to me. I said, who she talk to? She talked to her mother. I said, good. Because if you don't talk to her with your, with your wife or with your, with your child mother, it's going to be all right. You're going to find out something if you don't fly out the handle and act like a park eight. Be, be glad they're communicating with one of y'all. I don't see why they don't talk to me. Shut up. They talking. And sometimes they'll come to you. Daddy won't come to mama. But don't play that game. Don't let them play you like that. Well, she only come to me, so you stay out. Don't let them play you like that. No, you need both. You need both parents to work that. Amen. You got them working you. You sitting there shining your badge of honor. She only talks to me. And mama bears about she only manipulating you. And you sitting there shining your badge on top. Oh, glory be to God. You better get some wisdom. Because see, how we, brothers, fathers, how we raise our children, that's how they look for their mates. Our sons and daughters. Amen. What we do, what we show, how we treat their mother, or how we treat our wives, and how they treat us, they get the example in the household of what they're supposed to look for. And you ought to give them some high standards. Amen. Some some high standards. And teach them how to do some stuff and how to cook and how to sew and how to iron and stuff. Oh, they say pastor so old fashioned. Some of the young children now just look up here and say, That man is over sixty. Listen to him. He is over sixty. <laughs> but guess what? It works. It works. Those old saints, those things work. Hard work done pay off. Being slick does not. We need to teach them some value. And teach them about Christ and about God and, and how, how to worship Him and, and how to study who God is and how to know who God is for themselves. I tell folks that they can recite Beyonce, they can recite the Bible. I don't mind folk dancing and having fun, but you don't know nothing about the Word. You're... Well, my. My mother and father, they're Christians, and that's good enough for me. No. They pray for you, but they can't be who you need to be. Father, be careful because 
all the world has to offer is not good. We, we need to think, when we, and we'll go with Proverbs 14, 12. We'll start with that one for our point one. There is a way. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. What Proverbs is saying that your life affects other lives. And when you go down, they go down. You may not go down, they may not go down all the way, but something negative happens when the provider and the protector is going the wrong way. Go the wrong way on a one-way street. Keep it up and see what happens. And Proverbs is saying there's a way that seemeth right. So if there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, and the end of the ways of death, then point number one is make sure that you're following God. Make sure you're following God's way. Point number one from Proverbs fourteen twelve. Make sure you're following God's way. So find the right way. Don't go around seeming. It seems right. It feel right. Know that it's right. So there's a way that seems right, but the end, what it says is, if you don't check it, you won't know it's wrong until you get to the end of it. If you don't check yourself, if you don't have somebody that will tell you the truth, and challenge you, and won't tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear, you won't realize you've been on the wrong path until you cracked up somewhere. That's what Proverbs 14 says. It seemed right. It felt right. One no harm in it. There's a lot of things that may not be harmful, but may not be good for you. Because it's not productive enough. It's not going to give you what you need to be that dad, to be that father, to bless your son, to bless your daughter. There's a way which seemeth right. And, and the Bible says, if it seem right, then it, then it, that mean right, and it means it may not be right. So it says, continue to search, continue to look for the right way. Don't fall for the way that seemeth right. One commentary says, the, the, the way that seemeth right is so easy. Don't have no challenges. It's just easy. Everything just right there. But prophet said, you better be careful. In order to prepare to be the best you, you got to be on the right way. Travel the right road. Stop making excuses. We need to stop making excuses for ourselves, my brothers. That's the way I was brought up. But your brought up is old. You grown man now. What you going to do as grown man? Brought up is over. So it seemeth right. But when are we going to look at ourselves and examine ourselves and check ourselves? There's a way that seems right. But the end there is destruction. So, as I said before, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thy own understanding. He will direct thy paths. In other words, he'll direct your way. The way is a path, your path of life. Do you want to take somebody down the same road you're going on? Or you want to sit back and say, oh, don't, don't, do, don't do what I do now. Do what I say. You know we imitate it. Children imitate. Don't do what I do. do it. No, children have a lot of information now. And they will imitate us because they feel that it's good enough for you. And if you got this thing all masked like you're making it, like it's good, like you got all this money, like you got it going on, and then you somewhere else drinking and snorting and going crazy and doing all kind of what, your child is going to see the part that you got dressed up like it's all right. And then you're going to begin to wonder, why are they doing that? Children, I haven't met a dumb child yet. I've met children that learn differently, but they're not dumb. Children know. They know more than you think they know. Amen. You think they sleep. They listen to you. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Romans 3, 23 says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you and I, my brother, can still become the best us through Jesus Christ. There's still a way. The Garden of Eden already happened, and then God still made a way for you and I to get out of that mess. Point number two. Look at Psalm 3723. The steps 
of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Another verse that says the steps of a good man are directed by the Lord. He delights in each step they take. So point number two, let God order your steps. We just heard the song, Order My Steps. See, when you talk, ask God to order your steps from the, from the book of Psalms, please be serious. It's just like you go in a restaurant, you order something and they bring, they bring it to you. I ain't order that. God, like, I heard you order, you said order your steps in your word, oh Lord. And because the step you don't like, you want to send the order back. God, in order for you to become the best you, let me order your steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. This verse is referring to a man that is not traveling on a path that seemeth right, but a man that is traveling on the path that is right. And it is on this path that God orders, establishes his steps. See, if you're going down 51st Street and God sends you to 52nd Street, the orders are not on 51st Street. Your orders are on 52nd Street. Because that's where God is sending you. Oh, my God. No, but 51st is like I got less traffic. 51st Street looks better. God didn't ask you that. You asked God to order your steps, and he told you to go this route, and you want to go that route. The 51st Street seemeth right, but 52nd Street is right. There's a way that seemeth right, but when God orders your steps, that is, in fact, the right way. It is all, see, when God's in it, he orders and establishes your steps, and he is delightful and pleased with every step you take. And the next verse says, even the step that where you slip and fall, he's still delighted in you because he still loves you, because your heart is still right with him. Oh, glory be to God. The step of a good man. A lot of folks, a lot of sisters say, I'm looking for me a good man. It's not in the ring, and it's not in the blame, and it's not the way they say, something. <laughs> come on, come on, somebody, come on. Don't get fooled by that, you know what I mean? Oh, he's so cool. But what are you bringing to the table? As a matter of fact, does he have a table? <laughs> The Bible say, I want to live my life forever. Yeah. See, when you get married, you cannot break, you're not supposed to break the vow talking about homicide and suicide. They ain't right. They ain't right. You're supposed to live together forever no matter what happens. So take your time in selecting the choice and be choicey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't just go for the looks. Yeah. Hang around. Find out how they sound, what they're talking about. Amen. You get some information, get some background information. Yeah. Amen. Look them up. You can do all kinds of stuff with technology. Yeah. I mean, don't snoop around and get their social security number like that. I ain't talking y'all today. Okay. All right. <laughs> but God will order good man steps. He said a perfect man, a good man. And then we have to be careful about the standards that we place on folks. How can we be unreasonable? But we want folks to be reasonable with us. And how can you not allow somebody to make mistakes? No matter what that man does, it ain't good enough for you. I ain't talking about the child, child bless, but it ain't good enough for you. You got to, you got to bust it down. You got to tear him down. You got to house. No. We're not all designed the same way. We don't look at stuff. The, my wife and I, we don't look at stuff the same way. She might enjoy one thing, I might enjoy something. You got to make room for each other. All I'm trying to say, make room. And most of the time, your child got both of y'all in them. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But you got to know who you are. You got to become the best you. And you got to be comfortable with that. That's why I don't compare myself to nobody. Only to the Bible. I compare myself with no other man. I'm not going to compare myself with no other husband. And I ain't going to compare my wife to nobody. Because this is what God has designed for us to do. Don't get into that. Well, you see, Pastor, so and so, he don't do such and such. How you know what I do? Did you talk to Co Pastor? She don't tell y'all everything. No, I'm just kidding. But you know, you. <laughs> Amen. I just know about sad by Friday, sad to be nice so she can smile on Sunday. You don't know what happened Monday through Thursday. You don't know. <laughs> but God wants to order a good man's steps. 
But a good man has to be surrendered unto God and be obedient to God. Say, yes, Lord, yes to your will and yes to your Even the stuff that seems like God, I'm going to let that go because I want what's right. Not only for me, but for my family and, and, and for my children and for my wife and for my church. And... Point number three will be taken from Psalm 37, 23. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Point number three, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. If you're a good man and God's ordering your steps, he will take care of you. And you got to get rid of that fear. Because sometimes as men, we want, we want to have that confidence. You know, and sometimes our confidence is, is, is we can see it, we can touch it, we can feel it. When, when we know where the money is, when we don't. Though he fall, God is even letting us know we're going to make mistakes. He didn't say, though he fall on purpose. He said, though he falls trying to. Travel the way that I'm taking him. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast out, which means he shall not be destroyed. It shall not be fatal. Stop laughing. Stop talking about him. He's about ready to get up. Don't count him out. Don't stand up. I told you so. The Bible says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. And, and why is that? That it won't be fatal for the Lord upholds him, sustains him with his own hand. One commentary said, God's hand is picking him up. God's hand is on his shoulder. Come on, get up and dust him off. And see what God is trying to say to you, my brothers, is he's trying to say that, that if you want to be the best that you can be, give yourself to me. Surrender unto me, and I will make you the best. And you will, the best you, and you will make mistakes. And I still love you. And you will fall down, and I will still love you. But the Lord to be the best for your children, and the best for your family, and the best for God, give yourself totally to Him. Yeah. To me, that's where you get the best shot. That's what people do. When they go and they make bets and everything, they're trying to get the best uh, you know, wager that they can get. They try to look at all the odds and, and look at everything that's happening so they can get the best bang for their buck. I'll let you know in life, in order to get the best bang for your buck in life, you got to give your life to Christ. You forget that seem is right and get what is right. Be being the best you, God's going to take care of your mistakes will be made, but it, it's not the motive. It's the motive and the intention that God's looking at. We fall down when God gets us up. So when a mistake is made, it's not the end of the world. And don't you be so hard on yourself. Oh, I failed my son. Oh, I failed my daughter. What? Get up. Stop talking like that. Most of the time we talk about we failed this and failed that. We're just trying to look for an escape route. I'm so embarrassed I can't even come out of the house no more. Just come on, these children got lives to live. They're looking for us. And the only time they know they fail, because you keep on saying you fail. How about you try something that it didn't work? I think that's what Brother Dennis shared us in Bible study, that WD-40. It got that, nut, that name because on the 40th try, they got it right. <laughs> I went to a pastor's study. He said, you see all those, all those books up there? I said, yeah, this is stuff that we tried to implement in ministry, and it wasn't time yet. He didn't throw them in the trash. He didn't get mad at the congregation. He didn't tell them they were no good, and they didn't have no vision. He just said, it just wasn't time for it yet. You got to keep on plugging away at this thing. It's not only your life, but you got the life of other people. To me, it's like a surgeon. It's like a doctor in the emergency room. You don't want to lose nobody. And you want to do everything you can to save that person that came for some help from you. But they got to be on duty. You can't be in the emergency room sleep. You got to be on duty. So when triage call, <laughs> we got somebody out here, the heart ain't beating right. You can't be like, oh, I failed yesterday. Not, no, you got to get up and do what God is calling you to do. None of us is perfect. 
But God will be there to make sure that you're not destroyed, that you will be sustained enough to get up and get back in the race. God has a plan for your life, and there's a plan for every life that your life is going to touch. Do your best. That's all God wants, my brothers. On Father's Day, do your best. All God wants you to do is to do your best. And sometimes you do your best, your children won't even understand. You do stuff they don't understand. And I found out it's because they're not our age. They have not experienced what we experience. Sometimes we put demands on kids. They don't know what the heck you're talking about because they haven't been around that corner yet. But if you develop some love and trust, they're going to think about what you're saying. Oh, glory be to God. I just love it when kids get old enough. All of a sudden, oh, my God, I sound like my mama. <laughs> oh, my God, I sound like my daddy. Okay. Because some of the things that you put in there, they begin to see these things unfold in life. And don't think because they don't get it right now that the seed's not being planted. See, when you always want immediate results, that could mess you up. Just keep on planting that seed. Keep on loving your children. Keep on trying to do the best you can for them. And, and explain to them where money comes from. Don't spoil them. Explain it to them. Hey, you know, you, you buy stuff for them, how they ought to appreciate it, and, and, and how the hard labor you went through to get this. You ain't got to give them a lecture, but let them know this stuff ain't easy. Oh, my God. So they can appreciate it. And work with your wife or work with your baby, with your children, mama. Oh, we all got mama drama. <laughs> and it don't have to be bad. It's just the way it comes off. Sometimes you, just, you don't see eye to eye on stuff. And sometimes they see. And you got to learn how to listen. Brothers, learn how to listen to your to your children, mother, or to your wife, especially if the mother is with the children most of the time. Most of the time, she knows what she's talking about. Yeah, amen. So you get the weekend story. They get the whole, they got the whole week. I wish I, they, you, know how to trust and listen. I guess, I, I, she don't need it. You just trying to get some money for yourself. Now that's daddy driver right there. And then you got the mom going, I don't need your money. That's when you get, that's when you get almost cussed out. I don't need you. But you see, let's go back to the message. If you want to be the best father you can be, then you must be willing to give God permission to direct your life through Jesus Christ. You don't want, you don't want to travel the way that seems right. You want to travel the right way. So how do you prepare to be the best you? You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you rededicate your life to Christ. And then you better prepare yourself for change. Because when you're serious about this thing, your life will change. Amen. When you're serious about it, you'll be willing to change. You will accept the change and God will change your life. But 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become. Come new. When God steps in your life, begin to change your life, all the stuff you're trying to hold on to, it seems like it's pulling away from you. It don't taste right no more. It don't sound right no more. It don't feel right no more. It's not happening anymore. That person don't want to see you anymore. God is trying to change your life because you say yes to his will and yes to his way. And God has a plan for your life. And God's plan for your life is always better than the plan you had because your plan seems right, but it was not right. And somewhere along the way, you say, yes, Lord. Being transformed by God is a lifelong process. A lot of times you don't have to repeat stuff, but it's a lifelong process. Because we're becoming. And there's different things. And as you get older, different things come up. And God got to handle that too. Amen. People change. When you marry somebody, they ain't going to stay like that. Things change. People get older. They don't even eat the same food no more. You got to go shopping differently. I can't handle that no more. It gives me heartburn. After 20 years eating all that stuff, now you can't handle it. Lord Jesus. Well, what happened? <laughs> Still like some kids change. As they get older, they change. Sometimes they need to have a conversation just with mommy, daddy. And sometimes they need to have a conversation with daddy, mommy. 
if y'all are on the same page trying to raise this child. God wants to order our steps, brothers. I have a question for you, my brothers, especially for the fathers. If you've been doing something for a long time and it's not working out, why are you still doing it? If it's not garnering the results that you're trying to get, then why? You don't have to be a Christian to change. If you have the ability to do something, you got the ability to do something else. But your best shot is to be in Christ. Because if you're willing, God is able. Don't try to do it in your strength. Do it in the strength of the Lord. Philippians 1.6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work of you will perform until the day of Jesus Christ. And guess what, my brother? Sometimes you're going to get hurt, and sometimes your children or the situation going to make you cry. Cry, get hurt, and move on. Don't move on away from them. Move on. Sometimes stuff happens. It's going to upset you. But it's not the end of the world. As a matter of fact, if you were very, very, very truthful, you had some problems growing up too. As a matter of fact, if your parents still living, you may need to go say, sit down and talk with them. When I was 15, what did I do to you? Oh, my, my, my. No matter what happens in the process of becoming the best you, remember Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing. Be a, be a man of prayer. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, verse 7, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Don't get all worried up. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto thee. And sometimes your children look at you like you got three or four heads. They would say, oh, dad, mom, y'all are so corny. And then when that thing happens. All of a sudden, they like corn. <laughs> but they got to know they can come get some good advice. They got to know they can come get some protection. They got to know they can come get some help. This is, how, this is what we need to establish. You don't want to establish an atmosphere where it's so tense and so tight that they don't even want to come home. They, don't, they want to stay with somebody else's house. No, you want to raise your children because God is calling us to raise our children to the best of our ability. You know what the child down the street ain't no better than your child? That because they raised different don't mean they ain't better. They were just raised different. It's a different child down the street. Stop comparing your children to others. People used to do that. You see, you see, you see the, the you see the the, 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 the the child down the street. She don't never get in no trouble. He don't never get in no trouble. And then they went to the. Uh, to the barbecue, the, the block had a barbecue. And then they found out little Miss So and So, she's something now. <laughs> little Mr. So and So, they something now. You ain't seen them out the front, but they climbed out the back when they went over the gate. Over there, Mr. Johnny's house. Oh my God, do you, the stuff you don't know. Stop comparing yourself and comparing your kids to stuff you don't know. It appears, it seems like she's fine. It seems like he's all right. If we all are born in the sin, the shape of iniquity, where's a perfect child? Tell me what child. You say, don't touch the stove. Next thing you know, ah! <laughs> My brothers, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Even when it seems like they don't understand and people don't understand you, if God is telling you to do something, pray about that thing. Don't give up. Don't throw your hands up. Don't get so frustrated. It's a major responsibility, but guess what? God has called you to it, and God's going to give you everything you need to be the best dad that you can be. Hallelujah. And dads and fathers make mistakes, and people make mistakes, and mothers make mistakes, and children make mistakes, but we still got to live. As a matter of fact, we ought to learn from our mistakes. Amen. Life is rough. So it's saying, people, but when it gets finished, the show is smooth. You got to know how to deal with this stuff, how to receive stuff. Toughen up. Toughen up. Don't be a whip. 
Learn how to take a licking and keep on ticking. The struggle ain't over yet. We've got a lot of work to do. So look unto Jesus. He ought to finish up our faith for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross, despised the shame, sat down at the right hand of the Father. You know you're on your way to the best you. This is how we're going to end this. Let me show what's going to happen to you when you want to really be the best you and the best father that you could be. Turn to Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Watch what's going to happen to you. And this is a promise from God. This is not just pastor talk. This is what God promises you. Amen. And you know what? If you don't get, if, if somebody don't be shouting about you, oh, you're the best father and all this kind of stuff, don't worry about it. Know that you're doing what God told you to do. And embrace Father's Day. I don't, I don't, I don't get nothing until Father's Day. So what? It's what you're called to do. A lot of people, they do stuff. I keep telling them, oh, i got to find that scripture. It's a scripture in the Bible that says, what you want somebody to thank you for? That's what God called you to do. You want all that. You want this appreciation service. You want a plaque. You want a paycheck. You want all the stuff. And God said, this is what I called you to do. As a matter of fact, I empowered you to do it. So what's all the big hullabaloo about? God's like, and? <laughs> but my fathers, my brothers, look at Psalm 1, 1 to 3. When you say it's about this thing, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Come on, wait for your season now. All right. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I tell you, if you're serious about being the best you, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the nor standeth in the way, but his delight is in the word of God. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And God turned around and said, guess what? I hear you, and I see you. So let me plant you like a tree. Right next to the waters. So you always have, and always be nourished. I like the part where it says, his leaves shall not wither. If you see a leaf on a tree that never turns brown, and never gets brittle, and never... That's me, it's con. Continually being, being fed and, and watered and irrigated by God. And whatsoever he doeth. God, how can you say that? Because any man that's in me is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold all things. So whatever he doeth, it shall prosper. It shall become something. It shall make a difference in the life of their family. In the life of their children. In the life of their church. But you got to invest in Christ. You got to give your life to Him. On Father's Day, you might be doing the best you can, but there is some help. And His name is Jesus. He'll never leave you, He'll never forsake you. But I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. God is not asking us to compare ourselves to anyone else. Saying, fulfill my word. Be obedient unto me, and I'll plant you like a tree. The rivers of water. He'll plant you where you need to be planted, because every family don't need the same thing. Every child don't need the same thing. Every relationship don't need the same thing. But God will give you exactly what you need to get through the process. Are there challenges? Yes. But guess what? You never have to walk alone. God will always be with you as if you allow him to walk with you. Let us all stand.